Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about time, energy, and frequency. We're going to try to give you a, a simplistic overview of, of really what's going on in the room. We've got a box. It's a container. You can think about it as, you know, a storage container. We're going to put a lot of energy in this room. And that energy travels at a certain speed, right? In this atmosphere, let's call it 1130. We're going to round it. So feet per second. So it, it's constant. Thank God it's constant. Can you imagine if every frequency traveled at different speeds? <sighs> Sound produces wavelengths of energy. We're trying to put all this energy in a container, a box. And most of the time, let's use a shoebox as an example. You're trying to put a size 13 shoe in a size 8 shoe box. Well, that's not going to work. So you got to fold the toe over. Well, there's your distortion. And that's audible. And that's not what we want. We want resolution. We don't want distortion, right? So the energy is the strength of this speed of sound, so to speak. So it's the strength. How much energy are we putting in to this box, this container? It can only hold so much energy, by definition. You can calculate it at every frequency if you want to. But that's kind of an exercise in futility because 99% of the time, people are putting way too much energy in the room to begin with. So calculating why it's too much is a little bit foolish and a little bit waste of time. So suffice it to say, you're putting too much energy in it, which is going to produce distortion. And the goal is to eliminate distortion, not cause more. Do no harm, remember? That's the goal. So frequently, frequency of sound determines how long it is, how tall it is. Lower frequencies, very long. 40 cycles, 28 feet. 30 cycles, 38 feet. So big, big waves of energy, like ocean waves. And they got to fit in the room. That's the goal. So we have to be aware of what we're doing inside the room, the physics that's going on inside the room, and then we'll be able to assign the appropriate treatment types, right? Some frequencies fit, some do not. That's just the way physics works. When the frequencies don't fit inside the room based on their wavelength, you're going to have distortion. You're going to have noise transmission. You're going to have all kinds of variables that are going to go on. The bottom line is you add it all up, it's all distortion. And our goal is to seek resolution, not create more distortion. Now, granted, all input into a room is air, if you think about it. Because the walls are going to produce reflections. The room, the room walls, boundary surfaces are going to put, produce ref, uh, pressure issues. That's air. So anything we do in the room is an air. The goal is to have the lowest air rate we can within the room. And we do that with treatment. We got to manage. So time, energy, and frequency really depends on type of treatment, the amount of treatment, and where you place it. So these three variables can be managed. Time, energy, and frequency can be managed with treatment, amount, and proper positioning. So kind of a macro overview of what we're trying to do. We're trying to put a lot of energy into a room that doesn't want it. And that's going to create air. Like I said, all input into a room is air. We have to manage that air rate. That's the goal. Time, energy, frequency. A little macro view of what we're trying to do in our rooms. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.